Alright, uh, uh, I have a message from uh, Romans 10, starting with verse 1. Romans 10, verse 1. I had one, but uh, we decided that was <laughs> what we wanted to read tonight, brother. We still need a congregation. Amen. <laughs> you got to pray for me. I can't see. It must have been all that sun today. I feel a glow. I'm a Christian with the glow, but <laughs> you know, I feel a glow. Maybe, maybe that was because I was sitting out in the pool on the raft going around and watching the clouds, you know. I baked my brain, right? <laughs> you know how that is, right? But we're we're just glad to be here tonight. Yes. Amen. Yes. We don't have Amen, uh, I mean we don't have to worry about microphones cracking or anything. We can just yell. <laughs> People upstairs is not gonna mind because they're here. I love right. it. So, across the street Bless there, the nobody's over there. Bless Gun the shop, they just keep shooting, they don't hear us. That's right. <laughs> Romans ten one. Amen. <clears throat> Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Amen. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Amen. That's for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Amen. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh, speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, Amen. and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. Amen. That if thou shall confess with all thine mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in, the, in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessing is made unto salvation. Amen. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. Yes. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Yes. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That's one verse that we should all have in our mind that yes. everyone should know. And yes. That's right, brother. One of the greatest, greatest uh, verses in the Bible. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Amen. As it is writ written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For it says, say, Lord, who hath believed our report? Yes. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know 
verse Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and say, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest of them that asked not after me. But to Israel he said, All the day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and a gainsaying people. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a love offering for the reading of his word. Good job, Brother Barry. Praise God. Brother Barry, don't go too far off. Singers, come forth. We don't have everyone here tonight, but we have enough. Praise God. I never worry about what we don't have. Do the most of what we do have. Musicians, come forth. Yes, amen. Grab a microphone up there. One ten. One ten people, sing with us. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Now I almost see all the same. 
see when the roll is called up yonder. I don't know if they did. It's three something. My bad. It's two forty. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks to turn all bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder I'll be there When the
We're looking for Jesus with glory to come. Tis Jesus who died on the tree. A cloud of bright angels to carry us home. Oh, that will be heaven to me. Oh, that will be heaven to me. Yes, that will be heaven to me. A cloud of bright angels to carry us home. Yes, that will be heaven to me.
so fair Meet my Jesus there It will be so grand When I get to that land In my robe of white I will fly away In my robe of white I will fly away But my 
Lord, leads me on, and through Him I must win. Oh, I want to see Him, look upon His face, dare to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. There's no path, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to Him, He will give me light. Satan stares me, makes my soul turn more far as night. But my Lord goes ahead, leads whatever He dies. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of the saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Care for that, home at last, ever to Guiding me, I can see as I onward go. Oh, I want to see him look upon the day, there to sing forever of the saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me hear my voice. Here's the last home. Then my Lord directs my bar, he does safely keep, and he leads me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me, oh, I love him so. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there's a scene forever of the saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Ere the past home and last ever do rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. I just want to say one thing. You know, the devil really tried to get at you, don't he? Every time I get up here and sing, it just hurts so bad, I want to cry. That is the devil. But you know, and the client says, sing. Sing. What's the difference? That's what I sound like. <laughs> and I'm crying, and it, right? Oh, well. Sounds good to you, He ain't going to get me down, you know? That's right, brother. Yeah, I got a push at home. I was doing my exercise. Let me see that exercise. You only did four. You only did five. You got to have a pusher. God's my pusher, but Amen. I had a co-pilot there, too. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, everything's going okay, but... Uh, yeah. The devil really got at me, and I imagine he gets at everybody out here. But hey, you got to keep plugging. He tries to get I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk, uh, walk and, and run again. Amen. And he said, "Well, did you run before?" I said, "No." And they said, "What are you going to run again?" I uh, love you, brother Barry. Yeah. Good brother Barry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time, all the time God is good. Get your Bibles out tonight, if you will. If you need some there in the pew, stand up if you're able to. Shake them around. Let the Lord see your Bible and repeat after me with conviction. Let's make our profession and confession of faith. This is my Bible. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. This is the invaluable Word of God. Jesus is the Word. This is the good news, the good report, the sound doctrine. This is what I believe in. Stand on, live by, and trust in. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Amen. 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 I'd like to start out with a scripture tonight, if you will. Let's turn to the book of Revelation, third chapter.
third chapter, verse 20. Third chapter, verse 20, book of Revelation. Say amen when you're there. Amen. You know, God will never force Himself upon you. He may put search situations and circumstances in your life, but He'll never force you to do something. Our God does not kick doors in. Our God is not going to tie you up. Our God is not going to drag you or push you. But our God will help you. Our God will guide you. And our God will entice you through His Holy Spirit. But our God is a gentleman. Tonight's message is called Choices. Choices. A lot of us have made different choices today. I was talking to Brother Al and Sister Gina, and I'm glad he said that he was on speakerphone because Gina was in the background. I didn't know it, so I'm glad he didn't say anything about her. <laughs> but it would all have been good anyhow, Gina. But I had my little grandson this morning, Stephen, and I wanted to go at a sit-down restaurant, and he wanted to go to McDonald's. So we had choices to make this morning. But as we got into our travel and I started to get off the freeway, there was an accident and uh, we kind of had to go a different route for a few miles. And Burger King was closer, so I'm trying to talk him into Burger King. I said, we can, we can go to McDonald's when we're almost home, <laughs> or we can go to Burger King down the road here. Which one would you want? So he finally said, I want some Burger King food. So we stopped at Burger King, but we had choices to make. Choices. We always have a choice. You had a choice of getting up out of bed either at 5 o'clock or 7 or 8, maybe some of you, 12 noon today. What was the choice? Do I get out of bed now or do I get out later? What do I have for breakfast? Am I going to go to church tonight? You made a choice to come to church tonight. And that's a good choice. What am I going to wear tonight? What do I have to do tomorrow? Where am I going to go tomorrow? Choices all the time. I hate going to restaurants sometimes because when I grew up as a child, Brother Barry, you might be able to relate to this, they'd give you a little menu and you'd have maybe a half a dozen or a dozen things in the menu when you were five and six and ten years old when I was growing up. As I got to become a teenager and I start going to restaurants, they have a list of maybe 12 or 20. Sometimes the restaurant might have 40 different things you can choose from. Used to be you get a burger, and you slap a little pickle on it, cheese and onion, and that was it. And they'd ask you what you want on it. Now you've got all kinds of things you can choose from. Choices. But that's not the kind of choices we're going to be talking about tonight. Revelation 3.20, and this has been on my heart for several weeks. I have so many lost in my immediate family. You have so many in your immediate family. I, I pray... I pray above all else, not just for their health, but their soul prospereth. I pray that they receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If there be anybody in here tonight or someone that's watching that doesn't truly know Him as Lord and Savior of their life, I pray they come to know the Jesus that we sang about. I pray they come to know the salvation we're talking about. I pray they come to know the, the one that has conquered fear. I pray they come to find the one that has conquered cancer and disease. I pray they come to know the one that has overcome addiction, the one that's overcome depression, praise God. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, and this is Jesus speaking here, Behold, I stand at the door, and He may be at your door tonight. And He says, I stand at the door and I knock. And He's knocking at the door. I stand at the door and I knock. And listen to this. If any man or woman, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to him and will sup with him and he with me. See, God is knocking on the door tonight. And I hope for some of you he continues to knock, which I know he will. One thing about God, he never quits knocking. 
see, the thing is, he says, if any man hear my voice and open the door, it's up to you to open up the door. Sister Anita, he doesn't kick the door in. He's waiting for us to go to the door, turn the knob, and let him in. How many people have seen the picture of Jesus knocking on the door and some different portraits and all that? I don't know if you've ever noticed, but the people that paint that and print those up, there's never a doorknob on the side of the door where Jesus is. Look at the picture next time. Google it. The door is on the inside. The doorknob is on the inside. He's not going to open up the door and walk in. He's there at the door knocking. He wants to be invited in. A few nights ago, I preached about, about the disciples receiving Him in their ship. And it said when they received Him willingly, willingly into the ship, when you receive Him willingly into your life, the storm ceased because the Master was in our ship. The Master can be in your ship tonight. For more, most of you tonight, the Master is already in your ship. But behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and show up in that door, I will come to him and sup with him and he with me. But it's a choice, Brother Barry, that we all make. Tonight I want you to travel back in the Old Testament with me to Deuteronomy 30. If you'll turn there, please. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. You know, we're put through a test, Sister Joyce, every day. Every single day, Sister Stacy, we're put through a test to make the right decisions. Do we go left or we do we turn right? Do we do this or do we do that? Praise God. And by doing the decisions that are pleasing to God. <coughs> Deuteronomy 30, starting with verse 14. Say amen when you're there. Amen. It's ironic that the scripture that Brother Barry read earlier tonight, he read that the word of God is as near as our mouth. The Word of God is nigh to our mouth. And the scripture I have here states about the exact same thing. Starting with verse 14, verse 30 of Deuteronomy. But the Word is very nigh, that means near unto thee, and thy what? Mouth, and thy heart, and thou mayest do it. I see I have set before you thee this day life and death, or life and good, and death and evil. And I command thee this day, this is God speaking, I command thee this day. It don't matter if we call it the Old Testament or what we call it, it's in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, it applies to us today. And here's what God is saying to you, God is saying to me today. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. To walk in His way. Are we walking in a way that's pleasing Him? To walk in His ways, to keep His what? Commandments. To keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgments. Here's why. That thou mayest live and multiply. Thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whether thou goest to possess it. But if thy heart turn away, this is a warning here, people. Listen to this. But if thy heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear. Some people have walked away. They don't want to hear from God anymore, Brother Dave. But if we walked away and we don't want to hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you will surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Someone says, what is this talking about? You know what, if we go back to a life of sin, I've done that. I've gone back into the world. I've gone to the pig pen. Some of you have gone to the pig pen. I was talking to a brother just the other day, and, 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 and he said, oh, Ryan, you felt the same thing I felt. When, you, when we're out there and we're not serving God, we feel convicted. If you truly have had a taste of God, you truly have had a taste of Jesus Christ, you feel convicted. You know you shouldn't be living that lifestyle. You shouldn't be in that place that you're at. You shouldn't be over there where you shouldn't be. And the only thing that's going to satisfy you is coming back home. Because you know what? If we die in the pig pen, guess what? We're not home. If we die, die in the pig pen, we're not in the Father's presence. If we die in the pig pen, 
We're lost forever. We're lost forever. Listen to what it says here in 19. This is God speaking. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. But I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose what? Life. That both thou and thy seed may live. And 20 says, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God. And that thou mayest obey his word voice. Listen to his voice, obey him. And thou mayest cleave unto him. Cleave means you're, you're holding on, you're clinging to him. Cleave unto him. For he is thy what? Life. He is our life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Thank you, sweet Jesus, for the reading of your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Choices that we make, every one of us has choices. Joshua was stating in, in the 24th chapter, 15th verse of Joshua. He states, as far, as far as me and my home is concerned, I'm paraphrasing, and my life is concerned, we're going to serve the Lord. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to serve the Lord. You can serve whoever, whatever God you want. Sometimes people say, well, I don't worship any other God. I don't worship Satan. You know that you're worshiping. You may not worship God, but when you don't worship God, you're worshiping the world. <laughs> You're worshiping your job. You're worshiping maybe a, a spouse. You're worshiping your home. You're worshiping your car. You're worshiping something. I used to go to school with a guy. My car cost me $200. It was an old Corvair. Remember what the Corvairs looked like years ago? But he had this beautiful, beautiful Chevy Malibu. Man, this thing was orange colored. And another friend had a GTO back in the day. And those were the cars to have. And these things were shiny and polished. You couldn't lay a fingerprint on that guy's car. Don't touch my car. Don't touch it. That became his God. And we do the same thing today. Anything that we do in honor other than God, we're worshiping another God. And when we do that, we made a choice. Back in the Garden of Eden, Eve had a choice. God said you can eat of any fruit. We were talking about this the other day in Bible study. You can eat of any tree, any fruit in here, except that tree over there. Don't touch that one over there. Don't touch that. The one of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. Don't touch that. That's the only one you can't touch. She had a choice. She had a choice. But you know what you do to a little kid? If I'm talking to my grandkids and I say, don't touch that microphone right here, and I walk away, guess what they're going to come over and do? They're going to come over and try to touch that microphone. Touch everyone else, but don't touch that one. But see, she had a choice, Sister Gina. Do I touch it or not? Now, we put the blame on the devil. And that he was he was a very conniving and very cunning creature, but you know what? He might have put the thought in her mind, but she's the one that made the choice. She's the one that partake in the fruit. I'm not supposed to touch it. God said not to touch it. The devil has influenced me a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and touch it, and then she offers it to her husband Adam. And Adam partakes in it. So when God comes looking for him later, he goes to Eve and he says, why did you partake in the fruit? And she blames the devil. And that's what we do today. The devil. He so something. He, he, he was cunning. He tricked me into doing it. And then he goes to Adam. And for you guys that are married, you guys can relate to this. Why did you partake in that fruit? And as most typical men, you know what he did? He put the blame on the wife. God, it was that woman you gave me. I wouldn't have done it, but it was that woman you gave me. Always putting the blame on somebody else. But you know, we got choices that we can make all the time. What choices are we making? Who are we serving today? Who, who are we honoring today? What do you honor? What, what, what do you serve today? As I said earlier, you had a choice of coming to church tonight. Or you had a choice of staying home, praise God. Sister Mary's got some food next door, and, and, and God knows there's all kinds of stuff in the freezer or refrigerator. She could have had a choice of 20 different things today, but she chose one thing in there tonight, or maybe several things. What are we choosing in our life? 
Who do we choose in our life? The Bible says that, that bad company corrupts good morals. Sometimes we go out there and we want to save the world. We need to pray for the world. We need to pray for the lost. But sometimes we rub shoulders with the wrong people. Sometimes we get too close to the wrong people. How many people know what I'm talking about? Somebody can relate to that. You know, sometimes I have to love people at a distance. I, I, I might pray for them. I might shake their hand. I, I might hug them for a moment, even slobber on them for a moment. But sometimes i got to back off. I talked to a good friend today. I, I, I don't see him except maybe once, twice a year. And it's only for about 10 or 15 minutes. Not that I'm afraid to spend time with them. I believe I've I got enough God to, 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 to hold on. But you know what? I don't want to play with fire. He, he's a past that I don't want to be part of anymore. But I'll pray for his salvation. I'll pray for his deliverance itself. Sometimes you've got to just stay away. The Bible says to come up from among them. See, if I'm among them, some of that can get on me itself. But it's my choice. Do I, do I go over here and be with, with, with the ones that can pull me back down? Or do I go over here and be with the ones that can help lift me up? That's why the church, the, we should talk about the church going to church all the time. Don't forsake the same way as yourself as some people have. Too many people, they go, I can, I can go to church. I don't like organized religion. I, I'll stay home and go to church. Well, sometimes by you staying home and go to church, you might end up not getting into heaven, but going straight to hell, praise God, because you need the encouragement of others. You need other Christians lifting you up. Because when you're away from God's people, when you're away, and you make, and that's a choice you make. I talked to someone a few weeks ago. I don't like organized religion. What denomination are you part of? I said, we're non-denomination. We're still organized. You still have church at certain times, right? Yeah. You sing songs? Yeah. You have a preacher? Yeah. Well, that's organized. I think you should be able to be free and just worship God any way you want to. And well, we have a lot of freedom in our church. But there's power. When you have Christians coming together to worship and honor Him and praise Him. The Bible says He inhabits the praises of His people. That means plural. He inhabits you too when you're all by yourself. But He wants people to come together. But it's a choice. We have a choice once we come to the knowledge, knowledge of our Lord and Savior. See, we can't change in our own people. How many people understand that? We can't change our thinking. We can't change our mouth. We can't change our old habits. We can't change our addictions. We can't change our bondages. We can't get well in any fashion. And we come to the knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Once we know Him, we have the ability to do it through Him helping us if we desire to receive Him and to have Him help us. On our own, we can't do it. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. On our own, we can't do it. We can do it for a moment. But once we receive Him, we have the ability to change. We have the ability to say no to certain people. We have the ability to say no to certain things that are just pulling us in. Once you come to know Him, and once the Holy Ghost starts to convict you, see, He's going to lead and guide you in all truth, but He'll convict you too. Once He shows you what's wrong, and you're going towards something that's wrong and, and says, don't touch that. We have a choice. Do we touch it? Or, or do we leave it be? We'd like to say we, we don't touch it. But how many times do we touch it when we pick up something we're not supposed to? How many times have we picked up something? And not even saying physically picked up something. But you can pick up something in your mind. You can pick something that can get in here where there's a yearning and a craving to do something, to acquire something, to be somewhere. It's all a choice. Everything we do is a choice. What we give in the offering, this is a choice. Give of the abundance of your heart. As God has promised, it's a choice. It doesn't matter if it's a quarter, a penny, or nothing, or a dollar, or ten dollars, or twenty dollars, doesn't matter. It's a choice. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Let me, let me share a few people that had to make a few choices. We hear of Abraham in the Bible. 
He had to make a choice. He had to make a choice. And that choice, Brother Barry, was to obey God. Here's a man that was told to, to go in, into a foreign country, to go into a foreign land that he was not that familiar with. He started a relationship with God. And he went into this foreign land to obey God. He went into this foreign land to, to do what God has told him to do. He had a choice. But he made the right choice. And the Bible says because he obeyed God, this was considered righteousness unto him. He had a choice. There was another man by the name of Moses. Moses had a choice too. He never forced Moses to be his mouthpiece. He never forced Moses to be his messenger. He never forced Moses to go back to Egypt. He put a lot of good thoughts in his head to do it. He didn't want to do it. I can't speak elegantly. I, I, I can't do this, Lord. And Lord God Almighty says, your brother Aaron can help speak for you too. I'll tell you both what to speak. But see, it was their choice to go to Egypt. It was their choice to spread the message. It was their choice to bring them out of bondage. We all have a choice to do. But see, when we don't listen to God, we have repercussions. How many people understand that? When you don't, when you, when you have, your choices can either be good or bad, you're going to either have good or bad repercussions. Here, here's a great man of God, and he's spoken of all through the Bible itself. This man honored God, and, and God used him mightily. You know, when nobody wanted to go up on the mountain, they said, you go up, Moses, you go up. And they said the one time he came down, his face shone the glory of God, and, and they had to cover his face up. This is, this is a man of God. But see, he, he did something he shouldn't have done, Brother Carlos. Sometimes we think, well, it's just a little sin. Is God going to overlook a little sin? Well, I don't know, but unless you answer that to yourself when we get done here tonight. He's freed these people. They're in the wilderness. And not too long before they reach the promised land, the people are going to him and Aaron, and they're screaming for water. They needed water. And there was a time before that Moses took the staff, and God instructed him. He says, take that staff. Take that staff and strike the rock, and water will come out of it. And he struck it, and water came out. This is another time they need water. They're thirsty. He's got three and a half to five million people that he's taking care of. They're screaming for water. And out of frustration, he goes to God, and God says, Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. But out of frustration, instead of speaking to the rock, he took the staff and he hit the ground and water spilled out. People were happy. God wasn't happy. Someone might say, well, what's the difference? It's still the end result. What's the difference? That God didn't tell him to hit the rock the second time. God told him to do what? Speak to the rock. Someone said, well, that's a little sin. One of the greatest prophets in the Bible one of the greatest men most talked about in the Bible other than our Lord. Moses. The one that came down Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. The one that put the law into effect. The one that was the leader. The one that saved the people. The one that took them to the promised land. God told him this, I'll let you see the promised land. I'll let you see the promised land, but you can't go into the promised land. Because one sin, one sin, one sin. When God kept His word, Moses was able to see the promised land. But then he died. One sin. A number of years after that, there's a young shepherd boy by the name of David. He was called of God and anointed to become the new king. And he did what God told him to do for a period of time. This is the apple of God's eye. This was a man after his own heart. This young shepherd boy becomes King David. But just before that, Saul... King was after him to 
heaven's head to kill him. And the Bible says the soul was in a cave sleeping. And David had come upon him, Sister, Sister Mary, and he had a spear, his sword. And the Bible says he could have killed Saul right then and there, but he didn't do it. He had a choice. Do I kill this man that once was king? Do I kill this man that I once loved? Do I kill this man that I once played the heart for? Do I kill this man that once loved me? Do I kill him or let him live? And the Bible says he took the sword and just put it in the ground next to him. So when Saul woke up the next day, he saw the sword. He knew that he could have been a dead man. David had a choice. Take his life or not. We all have choices that we make. Are we making the choice that God wants us to make? The same man that was the apple of God's eye had the heart of God. Flesh takes over. His armies are out fighting. He has one of his generals living next door, but the general is out on the battlefield. And he starts to walk by his window and he sees his general wife, Plesheba, taking a bath. And he looks over and he sees her nakedness. Now he had a choice. Do I keep looking or do I keep on the trucking? We've all walked into somebody in a bathroom or something. Has that ever happened? He goes, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. But in this case, David didn't walk away totally probably started to glare a little bit more. The thoughts in his head. See, once you get a thought, that's why we have to be careful in what we listen to, what we read, what we see. Once that thought gets into our head, it starts to grow. And he desired her to have her. And he sent servants to bring her to him. And we know the rest of the story. They had relations and she got pregnant. And then the king comes back, or I should say that the general comes back. He doesn't know that his wife has been unfaithful. David and her have committed adultery. That's, that wasn't what God wanted. But he made a wrong choice. And when you make a wrong choice, you continue to make other wrong choices sometimes. So he says, how can I fix this? Well, if my general sleeps with her, he'll think it's his baby. That's what we'll do. And he starts to edge the general to do that. But the general, being a great general, says, no, I'm not going to go away with my wife. I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to sleep with the troops out there in the cold. Put a whammy on David's plan. And then he plans to put the general in front of the battlefield so that it's almost a suicide mission that he'll be killed. He said, that's a way of eliminating it. That way I can go ahead and have the Shiva as my wife. So it goes from adultery to lying to now murder. And he gets killed. But see, there's consequences to sin. There's consequences to sin. I remember the prophet going up to David and saying there was a man that had a sheep. And another man took that man's only sheep. And David got frustrated. And he says, what do you think ought to be done? He says, that man ought to be killed. And he says, well, David, that man is you. You took another man's sheep. But Bathsheba was pregnant. And if you read Psalms, you can almost see where David was crying out to God. There's consequences to sin. Oh, Lord, make a clean heart of me. Have mercy upon me. He's crying out to God. But that baby was born sickly and that baby died almost immediately. He was very distraught. Someone said, why would God take a child? See, we look at it in man's view. You see, that child, once that child is taken, that child is in the presence of God anyhow, isn't it? That child is already home. That child wasn't suffering. But David suffered. And David used these remarkable words, and I use this in many funerals, you know. My child can't come to me, but I can go to him. My child can't come to me, but I can go to him. David repented, and God restored him. But then there was a 
temple that they wanted to build. And, and consequences will still follow you years later. He wants to build the temple of Solomon before Solomon built it. And God told him no. What do you mean no, Lord? Because you have blood in your hands. When you're a soldier, you're going to have blood in your hands, but that's not what he's referring to. There's a difference in, in dying and in, in killing in a battle and, and having murder in your heart. But he had blood on his hand. There's consequences to sin. The message tonight is for me and everyone else. What choices are we making? Are we making the right choices? Listen, listen to what God says here. Listen to what our Lord says in Luke eleven twenty eight. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Keep it. Listen to what he says in John 15, 14. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command thee. Let's not do what we want to do. The choice should be, what does God want to do? Lord, let your will be done. Not my will, but Lord, let your will be done. Jessica and others, we, when we ask for prayer, sometimes we'll have, you know, they, they want unspoken prayers. And I, and I believe in that. So I'll pray and say, Lord, let your will be done. Not let our will be done, Lord. When these unspoken prayers are any prayer, let your will be done. Listen to what he says in John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Don't do the left or go to the right, but keep my commandments. And, and I love this in John 15, 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, listen to this, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That was Sister Gina's testimony. Whether you realize it or not, you were asking God years ago, hey, wouldn't it be great to play in the nursing homes? Wouldn't it be able to do this? And you even said he'll give you the desires of your heart. Praise God. And if God is abiding in you and you're abiding in him, he'll come through. Sometimes it may not be at our time period or our calendar, but he'll come through. Thank you, sweet Jesus. But who are we serving tonight? Is it his will or is it our will? Or is it somebody else's will? He says, no man can serve two masters. He'll hate the one and love the, and love other. the other. No man can serve two masters itself. Well, Brother Ray, we're living under a time of grace. God is not a God of Old Testament. We have a New Testament God, and, and we're covered by His love. We're covered by His grace. Yes, we are, but there's still consequences to sin. I want, I want to take you to the book of Acts, if you will, for a moment. Turn to Acts 5, if you will. Chapter 5, verse... First verse. First verse. Is it Acts 5? Acts 5. Say amen when you're there. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Amen. I was thinking, Sister Mary, when we get done with uh, the book of James and... We covered, Acts was the first book that we covered in our Tuesday Bible study that, because that was the beginning of the new church. Maybe we ought to go back to that and recover it again. But here in the book of Acts, there's a married couple by the name of Ananias and Sapphira. They owned some property. They owned a piece of house or a property and at that time, a lot of the people were selling their property to give to the church, to let the church use it to, to support everyone. Nothing wrong with that. But here's the problem. These people, when they sold the property, it was their property. They could have kept some of that money. They could have said, what we're going to do is sell the property and we're going to give the church half and we're going to keep the other half. I believe that would have been okay. But see, that wasn't the case. They were going to sell the property and they had already told them, we're going to give it all to you. We're going to give it all to you. It was their property to do with whatever they wanted to do with. This is not Old Testament, this is New Testament. Jesus has already been crucified, he's already ascended. People are already getting saved. By this point, thousands. And listen to the story here. But a certain man named Ananias with Sophia, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being 
privy to, in other words, she knew of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? For it says, Whilst it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. When they said they were going to give it to the church, they were lying, not to Peter, not to the leaders of the church, they were lying to God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. In other words, he died, people, right then and there. Now, this sounds harsh, but this is, this is, this is in God's holy word. Listen, and Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. He died. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. Now his wife didn't know anything that was going on, so three hours later she comes in, and number seven says this, And after it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in, and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for that much, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband were at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came out, found her dead, and carried her forth, and buried her by her husband. Eleven and I would have been with all these people here the same way. A great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard of these things. Obedience to God. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. God Himself says in 1 Samuel, Samuel 2.30, For them that honor me, I will honor. For those that despise me, I will despise honor God with what we're doing but everything that we do has consequences everything we do has consequences I don't think that we have to be fearful in watching every word that we should say because I really believe brother Alf we truly have the Holy Ghost in us where the words will come on out the way they need to come on out we don't have to be concerned I don't think God is going to strike any of us dead but here's the problem I want to do what God wants us to do I want us to do what God has called us to do I want us to be the people that God has called us to be because even if God doesn't strike us dead here's the point if we're not obeying him we're sinning if we're going against what he wants against his will we're sinning right. and if we're sinning we're not going to make it into heaven's gate I don't care how much you want to. I don't care how badly you want to. See, we're not perfect. We sin every day. But we're also on our knees every day asking for forgiveness. Amen. We need to crucify this flesh daily. The only perfect one that ever walked on the face of this earth was Jesus Christ. So we're going to have our faults. But there's a difference in slipping and a difference in sinning willfully. A big difference. If I go down to the road and get me a 12-pack of beer and, and I go out and get a little bit of Mary Jane, that's an old way of saying weed, <laughs> and I go to my house and I'm smoking and drinking for the night, I'm willfully sinning. Right. I'm willfully sinning. Yes. I'm willfully sinning. Now, Brother Barry runs my foot over with his car and some word slips out. That's a slip, but I'm still going to ask for forgiveness. He runs the other foot over. I might have to be forgiven for something else, too. <laughs> but there's a difference in willfully sinning and slipping. Both are wrong. But see, I do have a God of grace. I have a God of mercy. And when I see a young Christian first getting saved, they're not going to do everything perfect. They're not, going to, they're not, they're not mature enough in the Lord. 
That little baby that we have at the house, Hazel, she's just now, she's not walking yet, but she's walking around, pushing a little toy, and she'll fall over, push a little toy and fall over. And that's what we do as babes in Christ. But see, God doesn't want you to be a babe in Christ for long. He wants you to mature. He wants you to get into the Word. He wants the Word to get into you. He wants the Word to, to lead and guide you and direct you. We have to have that ear to listen to what God is telling us. And you all know what I'm talking about. When someone first gets saved, they're not going to say the right words. They're not going to have the right dress. But as time goes on, they change. And that's the greatest joy that I get out of a pastor and we all should get out of the church. When you see someone that's not the same that they were a year before or two years before. Every one of us. And I repeated this about a dozen times to different people. You once were like them. All the sinners that are out there, we once were like them. Because we were them. We were them. We were them. But we've been changed. But when God first changed you, were you born, born again? We made out of the sun everything perfect. The attire might not be just right. The words may not be just right. We might not do everything that we should do just right. Sometimes we're like donkeys. We have to beat him in the head four or five times with a two by four. But as we mature in Christ, see, the Bible says we'll be known by our fruit. And when you see somebody maturing, and you all know what I'm talking about, how many times have you looked at this people? Man, they're not what they used to be. Look how they changed. They were up shooting up dope one day, and now they're out praising God. And, and, and they were out there half-dressed, and now they're dressed, and they're doing what they need to do for God. Or they were out there cussing out the, the, the homeless guy down at the corner, and now they're picking up the homeless guy and taking him to lunch. Praise God. That's a change in somebody. i got a dear friend of mine. I'm going to close up with this. Choices we make. He had a girlfriend at the time. He's about 10 years older than I am. And this happened probably 20 years ago. His girlfriend says, My sister is going to this new church. I want to go. He doesn't go to churches. He was a very devout Catholic when he was a boy, but he hadn't been in a Catholic church in years. And and again, I'm not knocking Catholics, so that's not what this is about. But he says, that's not even my kind of church. He goes, I, if I go to church, I'm going to go see a priest and you know, go to Mass and stuff. He goes, well, let's come to church. His name is Mike. He's a little short guy, Italian, 100% through and through. Mike DeMarco, so I'm not worried about saying it because uh, he'll, he'll use this as his own testimony. Mike grew up and went to Harvey High School in Painesville, Ohio. And no offense, Brother Don and, and, and Brother Nick, he did not like people that were not Italian or of a different color or anybody of color. It didn't matter if you were black, Puerto Rico, whatever. He didn't, he didn't want anything to do with you. And they would fist fight out there on the streets. This is how he grew up. And he would use every despicable, evil name that you can imagine. Well, Mike's going to this church, and when he gets there, guess what? It's a black church. And he says, this is crazy. So he's sitting in here. And he says, I'm sitting here. And he goes, I just felt like I wanted to get up and walk out. This is ridiculous. These are my enemy. This is true. But see, he wanted to please his girlfriend. So he's sitting there during the service. Something got a hold of him that night. And it wasn't the enemy. He comes back to the church a second time. This time his girlfriend wasn't going. He went himself. But God took a hold of his heart. See, he had a choice. He had a choice of going the first time. He had a choice of staying the first time. He had a choice of coming back. But thank God he came back. And he came back and he said God got a hold of him and the pastor, which became his best friend, was up there ministering and, and preaching. And he started to listen to this man of color. And God was pulling at his heart hard. He didn't know anything about being born again, Brother Charlie. He was born and raised Catholic, so they didn't, he didn't know anything about that until this time. He just knew something was drawing him. 
And Brother Barry, he ran up to the altar and he gave his heart to Jesus Christ that night. It was a choice. He was being grown, but he had a choice. Do I or don't I? He could have easily had walked out. He could have easily had not come back. He said, these were the people he used. These are his words. I hate it. He ends up going back to that church. He's still there after all these years. He became a deacon, an elder, the treasurer of the church, the pastor's secretary, assistant. He became the, uh, a school bus driver. He picked up kids and other people for church. The school bus that we bought, the uh, university with Brother Monday a few years ago, we got, they wanted to, a couple thousand dollars for it. We got that for, for a song and a dance years ago. God touched this man and changed him. Changed him. And he said, the greatest family that I have right now is my church. My church. And he would hug those that he normally would have cursed out. And they hugged him back. He said, they're closer than any blood relative I ever had. His pastor died not too long ago. That's why it's in my mind. He said, I've lost my most precious friend. Pastor Coffey has passed on. His son has replaced him. But here is how God can take a man or a woman and change them completely where race or color has no issue. See, it's never been a, an issue of, of color. It's always an issue of sin. It doesn't matter if they're Asian. It doesn't matter if they're European doesn't matter what country they're from, doesn't matter what race they are. We're one race, we're the human race. And we're all created in God's image. But see, this is what I love about our church. It doesn't matter if you're Hispanic. Brother Charlie said he's Hispanic. I thought he was German for a while. It doesn't matter if you're Hispanic. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you're back. It doesn't matter if you were the biggest sinner in town. Because you know what? There's quite a big, big centers in town here. We may have been in other towns, but we were all centers at one time. Because you once were like them too. But we made a choice one day. We made a choice one day. When Jesus was crucified, there were two malefactors, two people, one on right on the right side and one on the left side. They must have heard about him somehow. We know the one did. Because the one starts mocking him and saying, you know what, if you're the son of God, you know, get off this cross and save yourself and save us. But the other man knew they deserved their punishment. We deserved this. But he says, this man has not said he doesn't deserve this. He made a choice at that moment or that short period of time to believe in Jesus Christ. And he said, Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And Jesus looked back at him and says, this day, this day you'll be with me in paradise. The other man should have said that too. Lord, remember me. But he didn't. You're hanging there bleeding, trying to breathe. It seems like the other man would have cried out to him, but the other man mocked him. And even when the end of time's coming, the book of Revelation tells us, Brother Barry, there are going to still be, be, those that, be those that don't want to turn away from sin, that don't want to turn to Him. I know we always say, isn't that ridiculous? Wouldn't it, you, know, is, you see the end times, wouldn't you want to cry out to Him? No, there's still going to be some that won't. Their hearts are hardened. Some people have a reprobate mind. They're never going to turn. And you're going to run into those people. But I still pray for him because I really believe that because the Word of God says he does not want anybody lost. And I believe that everybody has a chance if they have a willingness to make the right choices. I, I, one of these days I have to get Brother Mike up here to do his testimony. Uh, I'll try to get him to come to our picnic. Uh, a good man of God, just a good dear friend. He worked for me. I should say I worked for him many years ago then he ended up working for me just a good man, but to, to have him say out of his own mouth how he just did not want anything to do with this church, with these people. But that became his home church and he became a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. 
Talk about the love that they have for one another in that church. I'm not going to tell you now because we're in November, but they've got a little saying about him. But, but it's just God has truly blessed him. And when I see the changes in a man's life like that, and I see the changes that he's done in my life, and when I hear what he's done in some of your lives, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. And if you don't know that Jesus we're speaking of, <clears throat> Brother Corey, he's changed your life. You've spoke of it many a time. And he's still changing it for the good. He's changed your life, Anita. He's changing your life, Stacy. Praise God. He's changed your life, Brother Charlie. Well, you need to stand up and say we're men of God. Somebody might have, I know you. I remember you. I remember when you. I remember you. God doesn't remember that. God sees me as his blessed child. Because the blood of Jesus Christ has washed away all <laughs> your sins and all my sins. That's what God can do. So tonight, all stand with me if you will. Everybody stand. Bow your heads if you will.